Hi guys, in the last video we covered views and right now I've just created a query based on the view we had created the last time and I just selected all the fields. Now let's start cleaning up a bit. Uh, for instance, one thing that bothers me is all these null values and uh, I must have mentioned that in a previous video in this series that null does not mean zero. Null means there's no value. Yeah, Zero is a value or empty is also a value, an empty string, but null is basically no value at all. And I want to get rid of these. I'd like to, uh, you know, replace them with something. Now, there are multiple ways to get rid of nulls. One way, and that's the best way, is to use the function coalesce. Let's try it out here with iron. Uh, if I go and say coalesce, now what coalesce does, it takes, it takes the inner list, it, take, it, it returns the first non-null value. So, um, so if I've got a list of like, uh, like three items, like one, uh, sorry, null, one, and two, the null wouldn't be returned, but the one would. See, and that's the way we're doing it here. We're saying coalesce iron, like remove all the nulls from, from iron, and those nulls, what am I replacing them with? Well, I'm replacing them with an empty string. And close. And that's how you use coalesce, as simple as that. And if I run that, now you see all the nulls in iron are gone, and I only have the values and as you see like a lot of a lot of uh, iron values are are empty and it can do the same thing for the other fields but i'd like to here show you how to combine multiple functions for instance i'm not interested in the numbers as text i want to have them as numbers so what i do is i would like to cast those that data to numbers so within here i go cast iron and as what do I need it? I need it as a decimal and close. So now I have, it's, it's coalescing those iron, but it's not coalescing iron as is, but it's coalescing the decimal values of iron. And if it's empty, then have a zero. So now what we're getting is not empty strings, but we're having these as numbers and the rest is just empty strings. And if I run that, and you see now it's completely different. You see the alignment has changed to right, meaning or signifying that these are now numbers, whereas these are all left aligned, they're still text. So, and then the other thing what I can do is basically, you know, round the way we've done it previously. So here as a final act, I can then round the whole thing and to, let's say one decimal place. And as well, as you see here, that name is not very, uh, you know, helpful. So I'm just going to give it a new name, which is basically as, and let's call it FE, you know, the chemical symbol for iron. And let's run it. And did I do something wrong? Oh, uh, of course, double quotes. Uh, FE, right. Now that should work. Right. Now we see. I have a lot of 0.0s, .0 .0s and um, other than that, now let me see, why is everything, yeah, there we go, we have some, do I have some values, what, well, it looks a bit weird, because I used to have values up there, yeah, probably the values, I'm seeing we have very low values for that, so I think um, if I erase that, to, let's say I don't know six then we should get some values out here because they're so small yeah there we go right anyways we see how it works and let's reduce that to three then that should suffice right so we did that with iron now we can do similar things with the other fields so let's 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 go and let let me just copy that and use it for salt and just change the name salt and let's call this field uh, you know uh, NACL chemical symbol for uh, NA, NACL yeah that's right uh, chemical symbol for salt and we can do then the same thing with fat and call that fats just add an S and let's run 
And you see now, we have now converted, removed all the nulls, replaced them with zeros, and uh, converted the numbers to, um, to um, you know, uh, sorry, the, the contents, the values to numbers, to decimals, and rounded these to three places. Let's uh, keep the fats down to one place, to one decimal place, and uh, same thing with the salt, and uh, yeah, that looks good. So now we can do the rest of the remaining fields. So I just converted all the fields, all the remaining fields, and I just um, added an S to their names. And now we have this thing here. Now, we have, what we've done, we have um, improved our original query by removing the null web values, and we've uh, converted the numbers to decimals, and we have rounded up these numbers to one, mainly to one decimal place, uh, except the iron, that one is rounded to three. Right, now, let's try something out, which is basically, let's say if I need to wear, put something like that, uh, kcals is zero. What do I get? And you see now the problem is that uh, it doesn't recognize kcals because uh, and, and let me show you another thing. If I say, let me comment this one out. And if I say order by kcals, and let's so do descending, uh, descending, and run. Now this works, and you see I'm getting the highest kilocalories at the top and the smallest one at the bottom, although these two numbers are pretty suspicious for me because remember all these values are based on 100 grams so I'm not so sure if these are right but, but anyways what you see here is that we have generated a new field called kcals works with order by but does not work with where now that's the thing is that if you have if you have a query like this and let me comment this thing out if you have a query like this and you have generated new field names which are based on all the field names, your wares are not gonna work. So how can you, now one way to get your uh, wares work is to basically copy that because this, because uh, the where statement only recognizes the old field, it does not recognize the new one. So if, you're, if you need to filter, there are two ways of doing it. This way, basically where you go and say, okay, I'm gonna take the whole thing, copy that, and say this, all this, which is basically, uh, this basically represents kcals. Kcals is nothing else but an alias for this. And we use this, this as a filter. And if I run that, that would work. You see, now I'm getting all the cals which are zero. But, you know, it's, it's pretty complicated. If you change the formula up here, you know, you'd have to change it down here as well. So an easy way of do, uh, going about it, let's keep it the original query is to encase this original query within an external query. So basically what I'm doing here is like, I'm going like this, select all from, and then I'm opening a, a, a paran and putting this stuff in and closing a paran in here. Right, now let me, let me reduce that a bit. Closing a paran, and let me show you, I'm just tabbing everything in. So what I have now, and this is called, uh, what do I call it? Um, yeah, genin. Okay, just call it anything. So what, I, what happens here is that I encase, this is my main query, and I encase that main query within an external query called geninfos. And if you see, it's a pretty, very simple to read. Basically, I'm selecting everything from this query, which is basically all the fields, and I'm calling this, this external query is called geninfos, and now kilocalories would work because geninfos recognizes now kilocalories. I mean, um, and that's why that would work right now. You see? Because that, that's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta remember, that 
if you're using where's and you have generated new fields in your uh, query, what you have to do is in case that query that, that you got within an outer query and give that outer query, that outer query means needs a name and that's it. And now you can run, you can basically query by the fields you have just generated. You can also say and proteins equal to zero. And now we've got like all the data, which is basically zero. So remember that. And what I what I would uh, suggest is that that's why I you can use views. I mean, if this if this if this query is what you need, then make a view out of it, and then um, and then use that view for further queries. But I but I want to. I don't want to create multiple views. I just want to create one clean view. And what I want is now I want to take take out all the data where 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 proteins and kilocalories and carbs and fats and all are zero because this couldn't be right. So let me just finish the query and uh, carbohydrates are zero and fats r0 and fe is 0 and nacl is 0 right now and if i run that query we would have we would have a lot of data which couldn't be right because like you know you, you got to have some calories you got to have some proteins or some carbs this is like this is like like air you know it has no effect and I would like, this is the data that I don't need. Now, how, how do I get the data that I need? Well, I, what I need is basically the opposite of this. So what's the opposite of this? Or how do I get the opposite of this? Well, one simple way of doing it, now we know what we don't want. With this query, we know what we don't want. Well, to get what we want, just add the word not, and in case that, in parents. And now we're getting everybody except those guys. And if I run that, and there you go. And now I have basically those guys who don't have the, all these zeros. Okay? So that's that's the word not. Not is basically, I mean, if you know if if you know what you don't want, then just put a not in front of the of that whole query. And the best thing is to encase that query within parentheses. Because if you don't, it just get it just applied to the first one here. See, so that's why I like using parentheses. Same thing here. It's very clear. You know, here with those two parentheses, very clear. This belongs inside. And you see here how valuable it is to to um, also to you know indent your code. So it's very readable. It's very easy to see. Okay, that's an internal query. That's an external query. That here is in case the not applies to everybody. You see, that's the nice thing about having clean code. Now, let's go further. And now the other thing what I noticed is that if I order by cals descending, um, oh, I, of course, I've got to put it down here. Right. I'm getting way too high calories. And the same thing I noticed uh, when, when checking out this table is that if I go order by proteins, um, I'm getting way too high values. Remember, all these values are based on 100 grams. So, and these are grams of 100 grams. So they couldn't be more than 100. So here's another way of filtering, and that's what I meant. I mean, I checked the data before this video, and what I did, I researched it by, you know, checking out, ordering it, and so on, I noticed these anomalies. And now, if you want to clean up the data, well, <clears throat> you got to set some conditions. The first conditions we already did, and the first condition is that one here, and now we can expand that condition with basically saying, like, you know, <clears throat> Calories, the kilocalories can be more than 100 because, you know, they're not part of that 100 grams. But the proteins and all these, they're part of the 100 grams. And so they all got to be lower than 100. So proteins 
is lower than 100 and um, <clears throat> carbohydrates is smaller than 100 and fats is smaller than 100 and Fe is smaller than 100 and uh, salt or NaCl is smaller than 100. So now I'm cleaning out these anomalies and now I have clean data where um, I've got that data without any of these suspicious uh, without any of that suspicious data we had seen previously and it's nicely rounded they're all converted to numbers and now this can be saved as a as a view and and now I so basically here I just do what I did last time I just I have my old view this old view this is the one I created out of the data and now I'm creating here a new view create um, view let's call it uh, let's call it uh, I don't know um, fundamentals or fundamental info is clean and we know these are the fundamental fundamental infos but cleaned up you know all these nulls rounded up and so on so now here just to recap we used in this video we used uh, couple of things first of all coalesce then we see here how we combine multiple functions together we used round coalesce and cast all in one line for multiple fields then what we did we created uh, sort of what we did out of our original query we made we made out of our original query we made a sub query basically we encased that original query within an outer query so this what is now selected is basically a sub query of the outer query and then we added some filters and now lastly what we're going to do is create a view based on all that work and this is the way you actually work with sql you don't do a simple you know query and go home you just build it this is the way it goes and sometimes it takes days weeks to build a decent query where you clean up and tune that and tune that and then when it's all done you either you know create a table or a view depending on your needs and that's what we're going to do right now and that's it and now if i refresh i have uh where's fundamental infos clean did i why don't i see it oh there we are so uh, here we have uh, fundamental infos clean and now if i just take that all off let me just copy that and then if I take it all off and go select all from uh, fundamental infos clean I should get the data that we had created see no nulls all numbers and now I can basically use that information for calculations you know to do some decent sorting i have no nulls these are not text and yeah this is a good basis or a good baseline to build on for our next queries